What it do? Dream Team, it's your boy D Neil back with another reaction video. Guys, here we are with my first video of geography now. And then we are reacting to the Netherlands. Now I'm an American. American. And so I'm excited to get to react to different places and learn more things about different places. I think that's completely awesome. But before we jump into this, y'all know what I need y'all to do is smack that subscribe button, ring that notification bell, give the video a thumbs up so it gets suggested. I got social media, Patreon, all up top. You know, subscribe any of them. Put all the links in the description. All you gotta do is hit the link, follow me, talk to me. Guys, chewing. I'll talk back. If you got a favorite uh, <clears throat> video suggestion, you can subscribe to Patreon and make it there. Or there's a uh, Google form link in the description section. Hit the link, fill out your suggestions, send it to me. You can get yours faster, fill out premium. What we got? Netherlands. Hey guys, so this is gonna be a little awkward. Why? Because two years ago, my yeah. Dutch friend Vincent, who used to do the animations before I regrettably hired Ken. Wait, what? He came and visited here in LA. <laughs> Long story short, I promised him he could be in the Netherlands episode. So we pre-shot some oh. footage and this was the intro we made. <laughs> I flew over, this guy, a real Dutchman, say hi to Vincent, right here. Hey Vincent, hey, look. Vincent, I know the Dutch are tall, but just step down from the box, okay? Just step down. <laughs> I thought he was dead tall. <laughs> That's tall! That's tall! You get off of your box now. <laughs> I can never top those days. Oh, and this episode is on the Netherlands. It's time to learn geography now! Hey everybody, I'm your host Barbs. Now, there are many countries that deal with water issues. Some lack water, some have too much water, and some like the Netherlands have bridled the wild stallion and have learned how to control the water and use it to their advantage. Water is probably Ooh. the most powerful element in the Netherlands, and without it, they would be, I don't know, pretty useless. So what do you say, 2016 Vincent? And then now, politieke geography. Without water. All of us would so be yeah, right? stop calling this place Holland. That's just one part of the country. Even though their country's national tourism website is called Holland.com. You're not helping us here, Dutchies. <laughs> oh, and hey, there's a town called The Hulk. First of all, the oh. country is located in northwestern Europe along the North Sea, bordered by Germany and Belgium. The country is divided into 12 provinces. Here's 2016 Vincent naming all of them for you. They are Limburg, North Holland, Zeiland, South Holland, Utrecht, Gelderland, Overijssel, Drenthe, Groningen, Friesland, North Holland, and the newest province, Flevoland. Almost all of Flevoland was reclaimed from the South to say in the 1950s. So oh. besides being famous for making cheese and clogs, we also make <laughs> our own land. The country kind of has two capitals, Amsterdam. Where you get that voice from? No, the way he said we make our own land. That's crazy. And clogs. That's dope. We also make our own land. The country kind of has two capitals, oh, Amsterdam, God. the largest city and economic hub of the country, hey, and home to the royal palace. Man. And just to skip over, the third largest city, The Hague, acts as the second capital, which holds the seat of government, as well as the International Court of Justice. The second largest city, though, would be Rotterdam, which holds the busiest seaport in all of Europe. The busiest airport, though, is, of course, Amsterdam's Schiphol International, Europe's third busiest airport, carrying nearly 70 million passengers annually. Now we reach the overseas territories. Apart from the mainland European part, the country actually holds sovereign over six other island entities in the Caribbean, remnants of the colonial past. These are collectively called the Dutch Caribbean. And here's where it gets a little confusing. Technically, the Netherlands is a country made up of four countries, the mainland Netherlands, what? as well as three other constituent countries, kind of like what Wales and Scotland are to the UK. They are Aruba, Curaçao, and St. Martin, which is actually half of an island that's shared crazy. with the French overseas territory of the that's same name, cool, but in though. French. This oh, means that this sweet. one island is the only area which the Netherlands technically borders France. These guys hold a high level of autonomy, they can have their own constitutions and currency. Otherwise, the remaining three islands are Bonaire, St. Eustatius, and Little Saba, which by the way has the shortest airport runway in the world. These three fall under the title ah! of special municipalities and do not belong to any province. They are directly controlled by the Dutch government. However, in 2011, they decided to switch currencies and adopt the U.S. dollar. All these I islands lie in the- Shout out to the Dutch government, U.S. dollar. That's cool. Right, However, in 2011, they yourself. decided to switch currencies and adopt the US dollar. All these islands lie in the subregion known as the Lesser Antilles. Aruba, Curaçao, and Bonaire are usually referred to as the ABC Islands, lying in the subregion of the Leeward Antilles, whereas St. Eustatius, oh. Saba, and St. Martin, usually called the SSS Islands, are located in the subregion of the Leeward Islands. Keep in mind, at one point, all six of these islands were called the Netherlands Antilles and operated collectively as a single constituent country with the capital at Willemstad and Curaçao. They even competed separately 
in the Olympics. With the exception of Aruba, who had autonomy in 1986, it wasn't until the early 2000s when they all voted for their future, and it kind of went like this. Okay guys, you have four options for your future. Choose wisely. You can have closer ties to us, remain just as you are in the Netherlands Antilles, autonomy as a constituent country within the Kingdom of the Netherlands, or you can opt for complete independence as a new nation and break away from us. Let's just do it. We vote for autonomy as constituent countries. Me too. What the? We want closer ties and we'll settle for special municipality status. Really, Bonaire? You're one of us, the ABC Island. You're really gonna ditch us like that and leave us with this half Frenchy Magoo? Yep, deal with it. And that's basically how it went down. So there you go. That's how you make a <laughs> Netherlands. Waterways that's dominate really cool. the country, though. There's even a town with no roads and only canals. But how did it end up this that's way? That's Somewhere weird. around the 9th century, people were kind of fed up with all the flooding, and they invented these seawalls known as dikes, which surrounded polders or reclaimed land plots protected by the dikes. To this day, the Netherlands has reclaimed about a fifth of its total landmass from the sea. So, what would happen if all the dikes were destroyed and all the water just came and flooded everything? Scientists speculate that the country would go from looking like this to this. Whoa, Amsterdam would be gone. God! So, the, the dikes are, are what is very important in Amsterdam in, in the Netherlands. We can say that for sure. That's really cool how they reclaimed 20% of their lands. So the lands were underwater and they, they reclaimed? That's crazy. So is their lands underwater? Huh. Or did I just understand that wrong? I may have understood it wrong. Scientists speculate that the country would go from looking like this to this. Whoa, God. Amsterdam would be gone. Yep. Luckily, the Dutch are fantastic engineers and have been taming this dragon for centuries. Shout out and Dutch. speaking of engineering, there are so many notable spots to check out in case you ever visit. So many West museums, London. but the most notable one probably being the Rijksmuseum in Amsterdam, the Royal Palace, the Van Gogh Museum, the Anne Frank House, numerous Ooh. castles like these, numerous star shaped fortress the towns, the so many amusement parks like these, the enclaves and exclaves of Beryl Nassau. We talked about this in the Belgium episode, the world's largest flower garden at Kuchenhof, Austerlitz Pyramid, this prehistoric burial site, and of course there are somewhere around 1,000 historic windmills left in the country from the 1800s, mostly God. in the Kinderdijk area, a UNESCO heritage site. Keep in mind though, the country has a ton of modern wind turbines that help supply energy to the nation, a topic that will be discussed in... Say it's alright. Bro, that's pretty cool. Hey, Netherlands! Do I need to get my bags back? Do we need to just travel the world? Is that, is that the game plan? I, I'd be happy. I need you guys to watch and like the video and subscribe for that. So Disney Plus, Hulu, and ESPN Plus team up. Oh my god, oh my god! Epic stories. Greek philosopher Pythias visited in the 3rd century BC, and he said about this place, more people have died in the struggle against water than in the struggle against men. The Netherlands is really unlike any other country in Europe because in order for them to even have physical land, a lot of work has to go into it. For one, the country is the lowest country in Europe, elevation-wise. Over a quarter of the land and a fifth of the population lies below sea level, and about half of the land lies less than a meter above sea level. The lowest point actually being here at Soitplas Polder, and the highest point of the mainland European part of the country at a small hill called Falseberg, just over a thousand feet or 322 meters high. However, in the entire kingdom of the Netherlands, the highest point would actually be Mount Scenery, a potentially active volcano on the island of Saba oh, in the Caribbean. Wow. Back to mainland Stay Europe though, within Saba. this complex system of waterways and canals, the famous Rhine River that goes through all of Europe and the longest in the country actually ends in Rotterdam. The largest body of water would be Lake or Bay Yelsemir, contained within the N302 and E22 highways. In order to manage all the flooding in the south though, the Netherlands has undergone one of the largest engineers engineering projects in modern history. Yes, the Delta Works is a series of massive elevated levees that close off sea estuaries, preventing flooding. They even have backup levees in case one down the line bursts. In the north though, the Walden Islands act as kind of like natural barriers against the sea. All this land reclamation has left many of the inland areas exposed to what are labeled as the largest open sand drifts in Europe. Keep in mind, they are not deserts, but rather strange wet sandy plots in the middle of green shrubbery, a rare natural sight to come across anywhere in the world. So in a nutshell, the entire country is basically one big River Delta. Hmm. We should hang out sometime. Whew. So that's just about it for now. I gotta get my triple shot of espresso break, which means we need a guy who knows a few things. <laughs> yeah! Besides all the water <laughs> chaos, everything is quite. Ah, uh, that sounds dope. Yeah, I was gonna say it's a lot. Of, when they say a lot of water, they mean a lot of water. But shout out to all the uh, engineering uh, that's done over there and all the amazing engineering to be able to use all that water and make all these different things to control that water. That's really awesome to me. <laughs> <laughs> no!
Besides all the water chaos, the Netherlands is quite a powerful nation considering its size. They rank in the top 20 largest world economies, usually around 17th or 16th place, and they rank somewhere in the top 5 to 10 largest exporters on Earth. In fact, they have the oldest stock exchange in the world, dating back to 1602. Didn't that lead to like the whole tulip mania thing where people sold a single bulb for the price of like an entire ship? That was not the stock market, that was just a socioeconomic phenomenon and at its height sold for 10 times the annual wage of a skilled craftsman. Anyway, today, although they produce about 80% of the world's tulips and over half of the world's cut flower exports, their economy is mostly driven by the service and energy sectors. After the discovery of a natural gas field in 1959, the Dutch became a fuel powerhouse. The Shell Company oh. became the largest and most internationally recognized Dutch company in the That's world. Besides Dutch? the petroleum industry, though, the Dutch are well known for Are their electronics the and tech innovation. The company Philips invented the audio tape, what? which helped pioneer other formats like videotapes, CDs, DVDs. The Dutch gave us that too? Yeah, the company was Dutch, but keep in mind it was invented in Hasselt, Belgium. Oh, Belgium. We love you, but don't try to f***ing take this from us. Otherwise, the Dutch have <laughs> made great strides towards environmental protection. It's not uncommon to find Animal Crossing bridges to allow wildlife to cross over high That's over 70 crazy. animal species exist. That is super, bro, shout out, Melon. That bridge was lit. That bridge alone sold me that I need to go there and visit. That was super lit, bro. I love wildlife. To find Animal Crossing bridges to That's allow wildlife awesome. to cross over highways. Over 70 mammal species exist here, such as hares, hedgehogs, stoats, and deer. In addition, according to their government website, they produce over 65 billion euros in vegetable, fruit, flour, meat, and dairy products. Speaking of which, the modern orange-colored carrot was originally bred orange here in the Netherlands, to specifically what? honor the king. Since then, orange carrots what are now kind of, kind of an international staple. And speaking of which, Food. Some top notable dishes you guys, the Dutch geography peeps, suggested we mentioned include things like various types of stamp pots, Dutch pancakes with powdered sugar, apple tarts, Ooh. bitter ballen, split pea soup, rookwurst, stroop waffles, so many potato dishes, brined herring and smoked <laughs> eel. Gin was invented here. Sorry, Brits. For what? breakfast, chocolate sprinkles on toast is common. And the pride and joy oh. of the nation, how to cheese. Yep. That's how you pronounce it, guys. Oh, and keep in mind, they used to be the largest beer exporters in the world, Heineken being their top brand until Mexico beat them in 2010. Oh, wow, cool. It's also important <laughs> to note that you will probably find lots of Indonesian and Surinamese dishes like satay or salted cod buns, a little cultural cue that hints towards the colonial past, which brings us to... Thank you, Noah. Follow him on Instagram. Yep. Hey, this video, hey, uh, geography, now I gotta say, this is a really cool thing, and I feel like if this was how school was taught, bro, I would have been a lot more interested in history class. That's all I'm saying. Instead of just reading out the textbooks and all that, you throw. We have come so far, technology-wise, we need to start teaching stuff. Like, like, YouTube videos have everything you need, and they're entertaining. So I love this. And I didn't know a lot of these things about the Netherlands. So that's pretty Thank awesome. Thank you, Noah. Follow him on Instagram. Yep. Okay, that just happened. Now, in Europe, you have all different types of people that operate with all different <laughs> customs and ideologies. Here, they have two sayings that kind of sum up how a lot of their country operates. Meten is weten and geselligheid kent geen tijd. How is that, Dutchies? Terrible? Good? Well, you're gonna get what I give. Anyway, the country has about 17.5 <laughs> million people and is the most densely populated nation in Europe. About 77% of the population identifies as Dutch, to whatever extent that may mean, whereas 10% are other Europeans, and the remainder are made up of other people groups, mostly Turks, Indonesians, as well as the Surinamese, and surprisingly, even some Americans. They use the Euro as their currency, they use the Type C and F plug outlets, and they drive on the right side of the road. Now, we all know that Dutch is the official language of the Netherlands. The However, right, if you yeah. speak English, you should have no problem at all visiting. Netherlands has the highest proficiency in English out of any non-English official country in the world. Somewhere around oh, wow. 9 out of 10 Dutch people claim they can comfortably speak English, and around 94% of the country is in some way bilingual. Geography Anna Jeez. told me a joke. Many times Dutch kids will ask their parents, Hey mom. Yes, honey. Why do we have to learn English, but the British don't have to learn Dutch? Because our ancestors decided it would be a great idea to trade New York for Suriname and one small island in Indonesia. It's important to note, though, that there are two other regional languages accepted in Dutch society. They are Frisian, spoken in the northern Friesland region, and the other being Papimiento, a Dutch Creole spoken in the ABC Islands. And it's already kind of well known that the Dutch are the tallest people on average in the world, men averaging around How six tall? foot one and women around five foot seven. And once again, here's 2016 Vincent explaining. Latest studies show. They're women. Or my average height. That's okay. That's okay. 
That's okay. Keep talk. Put one okay. and women around five okay. foot seven. And once again, here's 2006. And Vincent explaining. Latest studies have shown that natural selection has been the biggest reason. Being tossed is equal to being more athletic, successful, and healthy. Many educated men start families after their studies. Fast forward a couple of years, with length being very heritable, and the result is a nation of giants. Yeah, we're outbreeding short people. Mm. Religion in the Netherlands is interesting because historically they used to be predominantly yeah. Christian, yeah. mostly yeah. Protestant, but today about half the population identifies as unaffiliated, which depending on who you ask could be anything from the largest unaffiliated group agnostics at about 34% to the growing number of eatists at around 28%, which is kind of like a technical term for spiritual but not religious. Otherwise, Islam at about 5% of the population is mostly practiced by Turkish and Indonesian communities. Christianity, although not practiced regularly by most of the people, still plays a heavy cultural role in the Netherlands. Holidays like Christmas, Easter, Pentecost, and Ascension are still celebrated by everyone in a Dutch manner. At one point, they were a vast empire that spanned across every inhabited continent. Australia was at one point called New Holland, New Zealand, Jeez. named after the Zealand province, Tasmania, named after this Dutch guy, New York was once called New Amsterdam, and so on. Otherwise, what is the Dutch way of doing things? Many of you guys, the Dutch geography have told me, there's a Dutch saying, act normal, which is ironic considering that they are almost anything but normal. And here's <laughs> Random <laughs> Hannah to explain culture stuff. <laughs> Historically, the Dutch have always kind of had a counter traditional mindset that shaped the way they developed as a nation. For one, they are one of the few remaining monarchies left in the world, technically a unitary parliamentary constitutional monarchy that limits the royal powers. And the people generally like their king. He even has a holiday to himself, and the entire country wears the national color of orange. Of course, the country is known for being a frontrunner in passing what many in the world see as controversial laws. They were the first country to legalize same-sex marriage, they have regulated legal Legal prostitution, euthanasia, and they have a policy of tolerance. I said regulated legal prostitution. No, I'm not, I'm not. I got a woman. I just wanted to make sure that's what they see. Cause if it's gonna be done, you as well just make it legal. That's my thing. Uh, hey, the, hey, Netherlands out here doing the thing. They are doing the thing right. You feel me? We need to take notes. Marriage, they have regulated legal prostitution, euthanasia, and they have a policy of tolerance towards recreational soft drugs like marijuana. People 18 years or older are allowed up to five grams on them, otherwise it's a misdemeanor. They are world renowned for excelling in field hockey, speed skating, and volleyball teams. Sailing is of course one of their longest pastimes. They even have a huge festival once every five years called the Sailed Amsterdam Festival. For some reason, it's common for people to give birth in their own homes as opposed to a hospital. About one third of all babies are born this way. Uh, what about those clogged things? Ah, yes. Well, in the past, they actually That's served so cool. a very useful purpose. They were worn by farmers, fishermen, and artisans mm. in the past to protect their feet from nails, fish hooks, and other other sharp objects. Today they are mostly sold as souvenirs and very few people actually wear them, but they're pretty cool. Oh and hey Anna, what's <laughs> up with all those spinny windmill thingy mabobbers? Ah uh, yes, the iconic <laughs> symbol of the Netherlands. Well many of these historic windmills were actually used to pump out excess water to reclaim the land that they oh. now use for farming, all before electricity. And as for music, That's crazy. Hey, actually I got this one. Barb said I could have my own segment in the show now instead of just being a one-liner guy. Yeah that's right, uh, Keith has been upgrading. So yeah. Oh, well, enjoy it. Well, that just happened. Again, I guess everybody has superpowers now. Historically speaking, the Dutch contributed much to the Baroque period at the end of the Renaissance, with numerous composers, organ players, and vocalists rooted in Christianity. Traditional clog dancing was also a cool way to add percussion so to cool. folk music in rural areas. Today, however, even though there are many genres the Dutch enjoy, electronic music reigns supreme. Most of the best well-known DJs in the EDM scene across the world are from the Netherlands. And the Amsterdam oh. dance event, ADE, is is the world's top and largest electronic music conference. So if you come out here, get ready to get shocked with some musical electricity. Thank you, Keith. And speaking of the development of the Netherlands over time, let's talk about history in the quickest way I can put it. Hamburg and Bronze Age cultures. Hey, this is pretty cool, bro. I like this. I really like this video. It's made well, and you're learning a lot about the Dutch, bro, and about the, about the Netherlands overall. And so I think that's that's kind of awesome. ED, hey, I can rock out to some EDM. The Netherlands over time. Let's I talk can about do history. that. In the quickest way I can put it. Hamburg and Bronze Age cultures. Iron Age with Celt and Germanic groups. Gallic Wars. The Romans come in. Frankish kingdoms. Charlemagne, blah, blah, blah. Friesland once had a Viking ruler. Lotharingia. Holy Roman Empire. Confusing Burgundian and Spanish Habsburg and city-states. The Spanish takeover. Oh. Dutch revolt. 80 years of war against Spain. This dude is a hero. Golden Age and stock market. Dutch East India Company. 
exploring years, Dutch Empire, Napoleon drama, Belgium breaks away, Luxembourg breaks away, World War One, relatively neutral, World War Two, attacked by Germans, not neutral, decolonialism after the war, mining golden age, founding co-members of the European coal and steel community, which would later become the EU, government encourages over half a million people to move out, Euro adopted, and here we are today. Some notable people you guys, the Dutch geography people suggest we mention, might include people like William of Orange, the first king, Michael de Reuter, possibly oh. the most famous painters, Vincent van Gogh and Rembrandt, what? Anthony van Llewellenhoek, Willem Behrens, Abel Tasman, Anne Frank, Max Verstappen, Glennis Grace, hey. Dick Bruna, hey. these soccer players, these skaters, and of course the royal family, and of course there's so many others I could have mentioned, of course I butchered all the pronunciations, but we're really running out of time and we gotta finish this marathon, so without further ado, let's see who the Netherlands hangs out with. Who's that? Mm. He's been here since December. You left him that mug of Duncan with his cookies that night. I'm gonna say something. You should. I'll do it's it. Time. Now, there's a reason why it's called going Dutch when paying for a meal. The Netherlands likes to share. Systematic and mathematically equivalent to what is owed to each based on the merit they've earned. First of all, pretty much all the former colonies have some kind of amicable relation to the Netherlands. The Afrikaans language in South Africa is basically just an Africanized version of Dutch. Tons of Surinamese and Indonesians have been migrating to the Netherlands for decades. Otherwise, the oh. USA and Canada are very close friends as well. During World War II, the royal family actually took refuge in Canada, and Canada actually quickly changed the law in which the hospital was temporarily considered extra territorial so that the princess could be born Dutch. To this day, the Netherlands sends tons of flowers every year That's in gratitude. Great. For the U.S., the two go way back all the way to New Amsterdam before it was New York. The Dutch have immigrated to the U.S. for centuries. Five American presidents have been of Dutch descent. They are each other's oh, third yeah. largest direct foreign investors. They are both charter members of NATO since 1949. And overall, in most global affairs, the two usually work together as close allies. With Germany, it's like a funny oh, love-hate relationship. Like, the two share love so it. much historically, both being under the same influence influences like the Western Roman Empire, the Franks, and even their first king, William of Orange, belonged to a German royal house. Then again, oh, World wow. War II was kind of like a jerk move, and the Dutch never really forgot about it. But nonetheless, they've moved on and say <laughs> things are fine. Germany is their largest trading partner, both in <clears throat> imports and exports. Many Germans and Dutch cross over and visit, study, live, and have families with each other's countries. When it comes to their best oh. friend, however, almost every single Dutch person I have talked to has said their little brother they love picking fun on and calling stupid, Belgium. Or at least specifically the Northern Flanders region of Belgium where the Dutch speakers are. And many see the Flanders region as just an extension of the Dutch realm. The royal families love each other. King William Alexander even bestowed the Knight Grand Cross to King Philip and his wife. Flemish and Dutch people have been intermarrying and cooperating side by side since the beginning. And even after Belgium's independence, they've still clung on as the only two Dutch official speaking nations in Europe. And even then, Belgium is only half Dutch speaking, so they really can't afford to separate ties. In conclusion, the lowest nation in Europe with the tallest people on earth and with centuries of discovery, invention, innovation, and tradition, it's no wonder why the Dutch say they keep their heads above water. Stay tuned, New Zealand is coming up next. <laughs> so once again, Vincent, thank you so much for being in this episode. Our favorite Dutchman, Creators you have made your create. country proud. Dutch punch! <laughs> hey, that's awesome, bro. Geography now, that's awesome. I really think this is a cool way to learn it. I feel like you do a lot of money. When you're entertained, it's easier to learn because you're not as distracted, and I love that. I love what they do here. I can't wait to do more. That's all we got for this one. Uh, if you guys got a favorite video you want to see me react to, you can subscribe to Patreon and make it there. A suggestion there or in the description section of the Google Form link. Hit the link, fill out your suggestion, send it to me. You can get to your fashion and others, fill out premium. But make sure you hit subscribe to the channel. Ring the notification bell. Give the video a thumbs up so it gets suggested. Social media Patreon all up top. You can subscribe to any of it. Put all the links in the description. All you got to do is hit the link, follow me, talk to me. Guys, I love talking to you guys. You guys are the most incredible team on YouTube. It's your boy, d -Nier. Out.